It's the public display of affection that's echoed around the world after the Spanish women's football team defeated England, unfortunately, to win the World Cup. The ecstatic Spanish football boss grabbed the winning goal scorer and planted an enthusiastic kiss on her lips. Now, fast forward three weeks and Luis Rubiales is facing a criminal investigation for sexual assault. Not to mention the women's team's male coach, Jorge Vilda, having been sacked. So is the saga an example of women finally saying enough is enough when it comes to unwanted male attention? Or has it all gone a bit too far? So to debate this, I am joined by journalist and author Julie Cook and mental health campaigner Yvette Caster. Thank you very much to you both for joining me. Julie, I'll start with you. Do you think there's been a bit of hysteria around all of this? Have we taken an enthusiastic kiss as I called it, and decided to make an absolute, well, t take too many, um, what's the word, draw too many conclusions from it, let's say. Yes, I think it has. I think it's been blown out of all proportion. Um, as you said, it was a kiss on, on the mouth, but if you look at it, I looked at this kiss over and over this morning. I freeze framed it, I looked at it. What he does is he grabs her in a kind of bear hug, he says something to her like, well done, and then he grabs her around the head and puts a kiss on her face. Now, to me, that looked paternal. It looked paternal or or sort of a friendly kiss. It's the kind of kiss you say, well done to your, your daughter or your child. I didn't see anything sexual about that kiss. It's a man full of pride, his own national team won. Don't forget, he's a Spaniard himself. His team won, although he's, you know, the chair of the FA. But and he was exuberant. He was excited. He was overjoyed in the moment. I didn't see anything sinister in that kiss. Yvette, did you see something sinister in that kiss? Yes, I think it's very easy to sort of to keep it simple, really. This is about consent. You know, whether you're a man, a woman, he, she, they. You know, if somebody doesn't want to be grabbed and kissed, then you shouldn't grab and kiss them. It's it's pretty straightforward, you know. Um, and this is during a big sporting event. You know, the eyes of the world are upon all the players. And it's just, it's really sad, actually, for Spain and the Spanish mm -hmm. players who have worked so hard for so many years to get to this level, that their, their triumph, all their hard work um, has resulted in this story, really. Um, it's really quite sad, I think, that a man has ruined it like this for them. Mm -hmm. And yet it's about consent in my opinion. But Yvette, do you think it's worthy of weeks of news headlines and everyone chipping in to give their view on what happened? A huge amount of judgment, people calling for his head, calling for this to be, you know, a sexual assault charge on him. He's now having to go through a legal process, I believe. Do you think that perhaps that is distracting from real issues of sexual assault? Does this really count as sexual assault? Should it? it does count as sexual assault. Yes, I think it does count as sexual assault. Um, you know, some people might say, oh, well, it's not like he's jumped out of a bush. It's not like he's a rapist or anything. It was just a kiss on the lips. But let's look, think about this really in terms of their jobs. So if this was a workplace, if there were a team of salespeople mm. and a manager grabbed an employee, grabbed her by the head, as you saw him doing, planted a kiss on the lips, would we say, oh, that's fine, that's just normal behaviour, that's just being enthusiastic, they've just won a contract, that's totally fine? No, that's, you know, against sort of employment laws, and I don't see why it's any different in this situation. It's just not OK. Mm. Judy, do you see that? And it's not OK. She didn't consent to this kiss. You can't just go around, you know, locking lips with whoever you fancy just because you're just ex just because you're excited and then of course there's the the power dynamic too surely he should be made an example of i i can see um our other guest points completely and i think you know consent is needed of course and he, what he did was wrong i'm not saying what he did was right he did apologize afterwards for it um and and I think, you know, yes, let's let's call out things that aren't consensual. But I think in many ways, going on and on and on about this, dare I say it, kind of undermines women who have truly experienced 
a sexual assault, a sexual assault far greater, a sexual assault far more traumatic, um, and haven't had the same support or national outcry or even the police taking them seriously. I think this was clearly a man exuberant, as I say, happy in the moment, congratulating his fellow national team. And I think it's been brought back all proportions. And um, I also think that, you know, your your gay, um, I think I'm not pronouncing that right, Jorge Vila, Vilda, um, he's done so much for women's football and he's now had his head on the block. You know, he's been 17 years bringing money to women's football, bringing respect to women's football. Um, he's done an immense amount. And I think putting his head on the block as well simply for sort of, you know, not crying out about this more, again, is, is just all out of proportion. Yvette, can you see how some people uh, believe this has been taken out of all proportion and that the endless headlines on this subject are just a bit crazy? Can you understand why some people would think that when you look at the amount of news it's generated and women, unfortunately, are abused every day of the week, assaulted, and that perhaps this maybe is making light of the experience of people who have had serious sexual assault or should all instances of non-consensual uh, touching, whether it's kissing or anything else, be taken as seriously? And this is very important for, for women's rights. Well, I would say, yes, it's the thin end of the wedge. You know, there's a scale, isn't there? There's a scale of inappropriate behaviour and there's a scale of sexual assaults. But I think we have to say no. So, you know, I think it's very straightforward consent, to be honest, whether it's a kiss or someone getting broke or, you know, a, a rape, to be honest. I think it's looking at behaviour, men in power and how they use that power and how they then abuse that power. Um, I can also see how maybe people from a different generation, like maybe in the 70s when things were maybe quite different in, say, the workplace, would read about this and think, oh, well, it's only a kiss. But mm -hmm. times have changed. You know, we've had the Me Too movement. People have been thinking about things in a different way. I mean, I remember when I was younger, going to clubs sort of in my 20s and regularly just getting groped. And it was sort of like we just put up with it. But young women don't put up with it now. And that's good. You know, and it's right that people are complaining about these things. And I, I do think, yes, it is a shame that it's sort of um, maybe the focus has been on that rather than the victory. But at the same time, maybe we need to have these conversations so that people do finally start to get it and they start to accept that we can't behave like this. Yeah. And in terms of the thing about um, Vila, the, the manager, I mean, um, it wasn't just the fact that he didn't back up his team um, regarding the kiss. There were 15 women beforehand who were complaining about his conduct, not in terms of anything. Um, it was more to do with like how he was, um, whether he was being professional in terms of how he was training his players. So a lot of them felt that they were, that he wasn't doing a very good job there, that he wasn't hmm. being very supportive. And so a lot of them, you know, elite athletes, they chose not to go to the World Cup. So the top of their game, they chose not to get involved there. Can you imagine? Can you imagine wow. sort of male England players being in that situation and having such a problem with the manager that they just go, no, we don't want to play in the World Cup because mm. of how this manager is behaving. So yeah. I think there must be stuff that we just don't know about that, you know, there's a reason that these women were sort of going. Um, and I'm yeah, not implying I anything, by the way, necessarily... I'm saying I don't know, but yeah. what I'm saying is like they, they obviously had a reason in terms of how he was behaving as a manager, his professionalism there. So yeah, I don't it feels think a bit, it's, it's it feels a bit this, like this. A, a Me Too movement for, for women's football. But Julie, I mean, I would be appalled if uh, someone I trusted in a trusted position just decided to give me a big kiss in front of the, the world. Um, and I didn't want it, of course I would be. But do you think there's a risk that we over-police relationships between men and women? I think that there could be a danger of that at the moment. Um, I agree completely with, again, with, with my co-debater here that, you know, it's great that it's being called out. It's great that women can stand up now and say, no, I don't want that. I'm, you know, I'm a woman myself. I'm not saying I think we should go back to the dark ages. Of course not. Um, I just think that this particular example is so overanalyzed. As I say, I freeze framed it to do this show today to really analyze it. And, and there's nothing to analyze there. You know, it, it's it's an exuberant, happy man grabbing someone. And, and yes, he overstepped the mark and yes, it was wrong. But it wasn't sort of 
sinister it wasn't behind closed doors you know the fact that it was in front of the world i think shows that he felt there was nothing sinister there you know it, it was just simply i'm really pleased i'm really proud of you and as i say to me it looked quite paternal um and i think we also need to look at the culture here of kissing um you know he's a spanish guy the continent are far more kissy than we are over here, certainly. Um, I lived in Italy for seven years and people would regularly go up to each other and kiss each other. And it was, you know, it was completely normal. Um, historically, kissing has, has always been a, a thing. You know, the ancient Romans kissed each other on the mouth, you know, and, and I think we need to just, it's a kiss. It's, it's just a kiss. Yeah, I think we can probably all agree that it probably wasn't handled in the best way. Uh, by Rubialis himself. But thank you very much indeed for your time uh, for that fantastic debate. Julie Cook and Yvette Caster there. It's a tricky one, that one, I think. I think it probably has been overblown. When you look at all the issues that we face in the world, in this country and in Spain as well, I mean, this seems pretty minor. But then you can say, you know, women need to obviously consent to their interactions with men and that if this man can be used as an example to stop future men behaving in such a disrespectful way, then perhaps that's what needs to be done. But